What I want to convict you of today is that Marian devotion is theological gold. It is science. It is precision. The quickest, easiest, best, most efficient, most profitable path to Jesus Christ is through Mary. We've heard that a lot, but we need to be convicted that this is God's will. And the best way to see that is by its fruit. If you think of the absolute holiest people in the history of the church, the incorruptibles, the greatest doctors of the church, every single one of them was unapologetically Marian. Unapologetically. They weren't afraid to love the Virgin Mary too much. One of the greatest of all priests, one of the greatest of all apostles, one of the greatest of all writers was the beloved disciple, John. Besides Jesus and Joseph, John loved the Virgin Mary just in ways that you can't, we can't even imagine. And so a Marian person, if everything I'm saying is true, a Marian person should stand out to you as being extraordinary, above the rest. And if you were to read the Gospels, and I'm not talking bad about St. Mark, St. Luke, or St. Matthew, no offense to them, but their Gospels are very similar. They're good. They're Holy Spirit filled. But the Marian one, if this is really God's will, it's going to be the best. It's going to be the best. They even show him with eagle's wings because it's so much better than all the other ones. It's just the best. He was the best apostle. He literally was so confident that in his gospel, he said, the one whom Jesus loved. <laughs> Could you imagine how much courage that takes? Oh, and the one, so here's my buddies, my 11 friends, and the one that Jesus loved, he was the first man to have a devotion to the Sacred Heart. Long before St. Margaret Mary Alacoque, Le long before these images of the Sacred Heart, he was putting his head on the heart of Jesus, listening to it beat. He understood that this was the divine heart of God that he was listening to. The power of the Holy Spirit was working so powerfully in him. He was so faithful to God all the way to the very end. And I'm going to blow your mind. He's so amazing. John plays 4D chess, okay? He didn't even know what that means back then. So in the Gospel of John, it wasn't available all the scriptures like it is to us today. They had to memorize the Old Testament. And so when they said, uh, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He'll lead me through westful waters. They'll say, oh, he's talking about the Psalms, okay? So all the other Gospels are good. They start off with the birth of Jesus. Very important. But John is like, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. And you're like, whoa, this is a little weird here. But again, 40 chess. If you were a Jew of the first century, you'd be like, he's talking about the book of Genesis. Because what's the very first words in the book of Genesis? In the beginning. So if you're a man who has eyes to see and ears to hear, you're like, oh, something's going on. He's singing a song I recognize. So in the beginning, in the beginning, John starts off in the beginning, Genesis is in the beginning. Later it says in Genesis, and the light was separated from the darkness. And what does John say? The light shone out in the darkness and the darkness did not understand it. So if you're a Jew, you're like, I'm hearing you, John. And then later on, he says, and the spirit of God is hovering over him, the one who sent me to baptize with waters. And if you're a Jew, you're hearing, you're hearing Genesis and the spirit of God hovered over the waters. In the creation story, how many days? There's six days of creation. And then on the seventh day, God rested. So the first day, John talks about him. And then he says, and then on the next day, and then on the next day. And if you're counting, if you're a Jew, you are counting. The Messiah, next day, next day, next day, four days. And then in the second chapter of John's gospel, he says, and then on the third day, there was a wedding feast of Cana in Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there, Mary. And Jesus was also there. It's like me saying, Adrian was at the party, and Kenan was also there. <laughs> to John, this is very important. And remember, he's been living with her every single day. She's been giving him insights. She's been inspiring. She's a spouse of the Holy Spirit. She's been inspiring him. So he's like got one chance to write this down. Boy, he's writing down some slick stuff. So on the seventh day, there was a wedding feast. What happened in the seventh day in the Garden of Eden? Adam and then Eve came out of his rib and he saw her and she was so beautiful and he said finally at last this one is bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh and she shall be called woman this is just a backstory because this is what the Jews are thinking when they're reading this and then Mary says son they have no more wine and he says to her woman 
Woman, what business is this of mine? He was calling her woman because he too is bone of bone and flesh of flesh. Eve came out of the side of Adam and had the exact DNA. Similarly, Mary and Jesus, bone of bone, flesh of flesh. Eve tempts Adam in the garden to commit the first sin. And Mary tempts Jesus at the wedding feast to commit the first miracle. How did Eve fall? Because she listened to a bad angel. Mary listened to a good angel. The word woman is very, very, very important. John is purposely tying all of this together. Where did they sin? They sinned at the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Where did we get our redemption? The tree of life. And at the tree of life, the cross, there the new Adam and the new Eve are. And he says to her, Woman, behold your son. Son, behold your mother. This is very important. Why? There will be enmity between you and the woman, between your offspring and hers. Jesus is now giving Mary offspring, giving Mary children. You know what else John wrote? The book of Revelation. So we see a woman clothed with the sun. She's crowned with 12 stars and there's a great dragon. The dragon was angry at the woman, made war against her and her offspring. And who are her offspring? Those that hold the commandments of God and have a testimony in Jesus Christ. Chapter 12, verse 17. Do you hold the commandments of God? Do you believe in Jesus Christ? This woman is your mother and you have a serpent that's trying to come at you. St. Maximilian Kolbe says that the Immaculata alone, Mary, has the authority from God to crush the head of the serpent. It is her role to be your mother. It is her role to crush the serpent. We see this, John strings this thread through the book of Genesis. He strings it through the beginning of the Gospel of John. He strings it through the end of the Gospel of John. He brings it back through the book of Revelation. You have to remember that when the Bible was originally written, it didn't have verses and chapters. Those were added later on. So in John chapter 11, the very last verse, the Ark of the Covenant was present and then immediately goes to describe the woman. We believe that Mary is the new Ark. Moses was commanded to have an Ark made out of the purest gold, out of the finest wood available. And it had to be so precise because inside of it would be holy things. Because the Spirit of God, the power of the Most High, would come upon it and overshadow it. We believe that Mary is the new ark. Mary visits her cousin Elizabeth, and Elizabeth says, Who am I that the mother of my Lord should come to me? If you were to parallel that with 2 Samuel, the ark comes into the city. David says, Who am I that the ark of my Lord will come to me? The very next verse in Luke, it says that the child John leapt for joy in the womb of Elizabeth. And then if you were to look at 2 Samuel, it says King David leapt for joy and danced in the presence of the ark. And then how long was Mary, the new ark, with Elizabeth? Three months. How long was the ark at the house of Obed-Edom the Gittite? Three months. So the gospel authors are just weaving and bobbing things together. And why is that important? Because the ark was so pure. The ark was so holy. Mary is so pure. Mary is so holy. The ark of the covenant, no offense. I said it had holy stuff. Yeah, sure. The bread that came down from heaven, very nice. But the ark of the new covenant has the bread of eternal life. It has the word of God made flesh, not stone tablets. It doesn't have the rod of the high priest Aaron. It has the eternal priest. How much more fitting would it be that Our Lady be immaculate, be clean? It's all tying together. And there's another type of Jesus. Jesus, son of David, have pity on me. So Jesus was a king from the line of King David. In the line of King David, who was the queen? It was the mother. In 1 Kings chapter 2, the king says to the mother when she walks in, Mother, I bow before you. Sit at my right hand. Anything you ask of me, I will give it to you. It is the role of the queen mother in the Davidic kingdom to intercede on behalf of the people, to be at the right hand of the son. And we see this played out in the Gospel of John chapter 2. His very first miracle. How many times have we gone to Jesus and asked for something and it feels like he's telling us, what business is this of mine? And you're like, ask, but Jesus, please. It's not his will. And Jesus even said, it is not my hour. 
We have from Scripture evidence that if you need something, the only person who has the power to change the will of God is the Virgin Mary. How does praying to Mary make me holy? Jesus became a man so that man could become like God. God, the creator of the heavens and earth, the Alpha and the Omega, whose essence is to exist, whose energy and life and power itself enters into humanity so that we can be united with him. The essence of holiness is union with God. The most basic form of union with God, and we've seen this from the book of Genesis, from John to Revelation, is to be a child of the Virgin Mary. If you have Mary as your mother, that is union with God. The other role of a mother, this is going to be tough news for people who are very woke, no offense, but biologically, the woman's body, don't get mad at me, I didn't design you. Biologically, the woman's body is meant to nourish new life, meant to give sweetness, meant to give milk, meant to give comfort. The role of the Virgin Mary in your life for all of her children is to give sweetness, is to give comfort, to give love. When my children cry and they're saying, I don't feel good, I'm sick, Dad, oh, I hurt my leg. Oh, let me help you. Oh, it's not working, call mom. <laughs> and you call the mom and for some reason they're doing the same thing. And they're saying, oh, let me kiss it, let me rub it. Oh, thanks, mom. There's something about the love of a mother that consoles. And never was it known that anybody who's called upon her didn't get some sort of relief. Sometimes it feels like she doesn't give you the big relief until a day or two later, but in the moment, something got you through it. Something got you through it. It is God's will that you have a mother. It is God's will that you have a mother. We have this biological need for a mother. A baby has this physiologically built into them to search for the breast of the mother. You have this in your soul. So God wills that you have somebody to give you spiritual, emotional comfort and nourishment. Every family needs a mother and we need a father, spiritually and naturally. Mary is the spouse of the Holy Spirit. Sometimes you're like, I don't get it. I'm really confused. How can the Virgin Mary be the spouse of St. Joseph and the spouse of the Holy Spirit? This is very confusing. It's not confusing. The essence of holiness is union with God. If Mary had no sin, she was perfectly united to the will of God. That is essence of holiness. Mary gave her life over completely to God. The Holy Spirit completely gives himself back to her. They're perfectly united. They're closer than any man or woman could ever be. There's no human language to express how close the Virgin Mary and the Holy Spirit are. The only way we can even get close or have some idea is if you look at the humanity and the divinity of Christ, the hypostatic union. Mary and the Holy Spirit are not that close, but when you start looking in that direction, that's when you start looking in the right direction of just how close Mary and the Holy Spirit are. A large part of the reason why the church is failing in its mission of evangelization. Evangelization is first and foremost a work of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, according to Maximilian Kolbe, he was a great theologian of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary. The Holy Spirit flies to those who are Marian because it resembles his spouse. Now, those who struggle with purity, Mary is the key to all of those who struggle with purity. When you say the holy name of Mary, Purity just comes to you. Every time I say the name of Mary, I'm more pure than I was the moment before. Mary is synonymous with purity. Mary is synonymous with charity. Mary is synonymous with humility. Calling upon her makes me more humble. Why? Because it's admitting that I'm a child and I need her help. I need my mother. There's nothing more humble than a mama's boy or a daughter's mama. Well, I don't know how does that work. <laughs> a mama's daughter. <laughs> So if you're ever in a situation where you're tempted to commit sin and you're really tempted and you're like, oh, that, am I committing a sin? I don't know. I'm, my brain is so foggy. St. Alphonsus says, if you've called upon the name of Mary and you're not sure if you've sinned or not, be assured that you did not sin. And if you did sin because you stopped calling upon the name of Mary and you did commit a mortal sin because you know because you did it with your actions, and you call upon the name of Mary afterwards. And if you are in mortal sin, you won't be in mortal sin for much longer. Because what does a mother do when a child is dirty? She picks them up. What does a mother do when a child is hurt? 
She leans in and she helps them. What does a mother do when a child is hungry? She makes sure that they're nourished. If you go to a confession line, most of the people that you see in confession lines, they'll have one of these. Or they'll be wearing a scapular. You could take a poll in the line for confession. Do you pray to Mary? Oh, yeah, I pray to Mary, yeah. How do you pray to Mary? Oh, and no, I rarely do. When's the last confession? Like one year ago, two years ago? Wow, it's a miracle. You won't be back here anytime soon. All right, keep going. <laughs> it is the role of the Virgin Mary to always, 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 always bring Jesus. The only reason we honor her is because of Jesus. Submit your life over to the Virgin Mary. And my desire for you is that you don't just pray to Mary sometimes or when you need something. My desire for you is to become just like the child Jesus. Give your whole life over to him. And how? Become like him. Be a baby in the arms of Mary. What was Jesus like as a child? Could you imagine? Mama, what do you want me to do? Oh, go clean. Okay, Mama, I clean. Now what do you want me to do? Um, go read a book. Okay, I'm going to read a book. Okay, Mama, now what do you want me to do? The perfect child always asks his mother, what do you want from me? And she always, because she's the Virgin Mary, she always has something good. So we call this consecration. Entering into a relationship with the Virgin Mary, we call that consecration. What does consecration literally mean? It means setting something aside for holiness. Now, you can do it a little bit. You can just say, Mary, please be my mom. That's basic. That's good. But what we need is people who are willing to give their entire lives. Why? Why do you need my entire life, Gabe? Because the world is dark. When the world was dark 2,000 years ago, it only took one Mary to change the world and bring Christ into it. Imagine if we have however many Marys are here. We always say that Jesus needs our hands and our feet to work. Where's God? Well, God can't work if he has no hands and feet. Mary can't work if he, she has no hands and feet. And her job, her role, is to, to chastise you and to nourish you because Mary doesn't have brats. So Mary will chastise you. Mary will sometimes give you a little when you're out of line. She will. She will allow that. She wants that. Because you're starting to go into a crisis, Mary could have started that crisis for you because you needed a little slap on the side of the head. She loves you, but you have to have a relationship with her. So how do you begin to have a relationship with her? I'm going to give you the most basic because you're babies, and then I'm going to feed you red meat real quick. You're going to be like, this is raw meat. You're going to grow up real quick. <laughs> so the most basic form of Marian consecration is wearing the brown scapular. In around the year 1251, the Blessed Virgin Mary appeared to Simon Stock, a uh, Carmelite, and said, This is my garment. Anybody who wears this as a sign of their consecration, if they die, they shall not suffer eternal fire. This isn't a magic trick. This is what people always say. Make sure you know that they're not, it's not, it's not an amulet. Look, Dude, <laughs> get out of my house. <laughs> Why does this save me from eternal fire? Because this is a sign of my consecration. Pope Pius XII said, the, the brown scapular is the sign of your consecration. It is a sign that the Virgin Mary is your mother. St. Alphonsus de Guari, doctor of the church, doctor of moral theology, you can trust him in all things concerning faith and morals, said, no child of Mary shall ever, 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 ever means ever, be lost. It is impossible for a child of the Virgin Mary, somebody who genuinely wants to have Mary as her mother, to go to hell. Impossible. Because how is it possible that somebody who is united to God can go to hell? Inconceivable. It's inconceivable because the very most basic form of union with God is to have Mary as your mother. Impossible. It would be an insult to the Virgin Mary that anybody who wore the scapular would die and go to hell. Impossible. All you have to do is wear this around your neck underneath your clothes. Nobody sees it. It's the most basic form of all devotions. If I was a priest, I'm not a priest. Everybody I know, I would enroll them in the brown scapular. So you can give brown scapulars to people and they should be enrolled, but you give it to them. What does enroll mean? It means that the priest basically says a couple of prayers, enrolls you, get, get you the privileges of Our Lady of Mount Carmel and their order. But we're living in desperate times. And I have seen miracles that Our Lady has worked with pagans that weren't enrolled, okay? I have a friend who is a very holy priest. I think so, so highly of him. And he was telling me a story one day. He was in his office and he was just itching. Have you ever been like having a panic attack or like anxiety? And you're like, 
I just got to go outside. I cannot be in this office anymore. So he got in the car with the windows down. He's just driving just so that the wind could hit his face because he was like, <sighs> just trying to breathe like if he was wearing a mask during COVID or something. And he found himself in the medical center and he had his windows down and some beautiful woman, he's like the most beautiful woman came up to me and was like, Father, we've been waiting for you. Come quick. And he's like, uh, I'm like, the light's about to turn green. He's like, oh, where, where do you want me to park? Okay. He went up to the hospital room and there was an old woman in there with her family and she was a Catholic and everybody in the room was not Catholic or practicing their faith. And she was about to die and he gave her the last rites and she was wearing the brown scapular. And when he said, I looked around the room to find the young woman who called me in and I said, where's the young woman? And they said, what young woman? Yeah, the beautiful one. There's no beautiful, it's like, I mean, uh, no offense to any of you, but you're all old. This was a beautiful young woman. There are old ladies in there and old men and they're all grouchy. And he says, I, I promise you, the Virgin Mary pulled me out of my office, drove me all around the city just so that I could be there at that one spot for that woman. Don't doubt how much Mary loves you and how seriously she takes this. So the scapular is a sign of the consecration. It's not the consecration itself. I would never take it off. The second sacramental is the miraculous medal. This is more difficult. Stage one, brown scapular, super easy. You wear it under your clothes. You set it, you forget it. Nobody knows. You should pray a prayer to the Virgin Mary every day. Just FYI, this is a little bit more difficult. Mary appeared to Catherine Labre in the year 1830. She appeared to her a couple times. And on the second apparition, she appeared to her with her hands outstretched, standing on top of a globe, with her foot over a serpent, with the words around it that said, O Mary, conceive without sin, pray for us who have recourse to thee. And on the back of it, so the, the image flipped over, there was a cross with an M at the bottom of the cross, and there were two hearts and 12 stars. And she said, anybody who wears this around the neck will receive great graces. And it's very important that you have confidence, confide, with faith. You must wear it with faith. St. Maximilian Kolbe would say that if you could convince somebody to wear this, you've saved their soul. You've saved their soul. Why? Why would there be so many miracles associated with this? Because this is the gospel. What did I say about the book of Genesis? There will be enmity between you and the serpent, between your offspring and hers. What is on here? Mary crushing the head of the serpent. Where did we become the children of Mary? At the foot of the cross. So on the back, there's a cross with an M around it. And there's 12 stars all around it because she was crowned with 12 stars that also represents the 12 apostles. And so I have seen countless miracles because of the miraculous medal. In fact, anytime I see anybody wearing it, I'm like, that person's, that person's solid. And why is it more difficult? Because it only weighs a couple of ounces, but sometimes, like, I'm not going to lie, sometimes I feel like it weighs 20 pounds around my neck. When I'm in a situation where I'm the only Catholic, and I'm like, whoa, they already say Catholics are Mary worshipers, and here I am with a big old Mary around my neck. Sometimes it can feel kind of heavy, but to be honest with you, most of the time I forget that I'm even wearing it. But you know who doesn't forget? everybody else. And so sometimes I do things that are just nice. I'm at the grocery store. Somebody drops their phone. I say, oh, I'm sorry, ma'am. Here you go. And they look at me and they say, sir, thank you so much. And they, I see them lock eyes with her eyes. I'm like, oh, she's working. I love your medallion. What is that? Well, that's the Virgin Mary. Oh, yeah, it's beautiful. I was like, you know, Jesus and Mary love you, right? Yeah. Sometimes you don't even realize that people are being impacted by you. You can maybe be in a situation, you're in the university, your professor you know is an atheist. Atheists have t temptations to doubt their atheism because it's built into them that that's not natural. We have a natural instinct, a natural inclination to love God. And so you don't know what you're doing and you're just being polite. They see this thing shining in a particular way. They see how joyful you are. They see how happy you are. And what happens? You touch their heart. They associate it with God. When you could have been a devout Christian and they never knew it before, they just thought you're a nice person. But now they know, wow, not only are you a good Christian, you've got something about that woman around your neck. This has saved my life on several occasions. Recently during COVID, I was really, really sick. I thought I was going to die. My wife was like, we need to take you to the emergency room. It was like 2 o'clock in the morning. If you don't fall asleep in the neck, because I was like having a panic attack. I was like, can't breathe. Take me to the emergency room. 
It's like, we'll give you 20 minutes. If you don't fall asleep, we'll get the kids, because we have three kids. We'll take them all to the ER. And so I was like getting dressed, and I, I was like, where's my medal? And then I put my medal on, and I, I laid back down for a second. And I said, blessed mother, all the people in the hospital are going to shake their head at me. They're going to say, look, Mary abandoned him. I was like, if you want that to happen, I'm going to wear this. I'm going to wear this to the emergency room. They're all going to talk bad about you. They're not going to have devotion to you. Are you looking at that happen? I call that my prayer. <laughs> the, second I, the second I issued that prayer, next thing you know, I was asleep. The next morning, I could breathe way better. I could breathe way better. I went into the emergency room anyways because I remember like, I, I was like dying the night before. So I just went in to go get checked out. And they're like, there's nothing wrong with you. I was like, there is something wrong with me. <laughs> I must have asthma. Check for something. No, you're good. No, I'm not good. You're a bad doctor. <laughs> and then I remembered my prayer from the night before. Just countless miracles from this. You'll notice also that she has rays coming out of her hands. St. Catherine asked her, Blessed Mother, what are those rays? And she said, these are all of the graces that God wants to give. Well, how come some of your hands, some of your rings, they don't have any rays? If you're wondering, does the Virgin Mary wear jewelry? In this apparition, she had many rings. Some of the rings did not have rays that came out of them. Why aren't there any rays coming out of those rings? And she said, because those are the graces that God wants to give specifically through me that nobody is asking. God has willed that his mother be an integral part, that the woman from the beginning and the woman at the end play an integral part. That's why there are two hearts. The flesh of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, has the same DNA as the blood of the Virgin Mary. They're integral. They're they are united in a special way. Now we're going to discuss everything that I've come here to discuss. All of that was just my way of getting in the door. Now we're going to talk about what I want to talk about. <laughs> so... St. Dominic. St. Dominic was an amazing preacher. Have you ever heard an amazing preacher before? And you're like, dang, that guy's got the power of the Holy Spirit. St. Dominic was like the best of the best of preachers. He, you heard him and you're like, oh boy, dang, that was good. But he was totally ineffective. There was a heresy going on, the Albigensian heresy, around the year 1200. And he was so ineffective, but he loved God so much that he offered himself as a victim what does that mean? I'm offering myself, Lord. Do whatever you want. I will suffer anything. I want to offer any reparation possible. So he didn't eat for three days. He didn't sleep for three days. He was whipping himself with cords. He was walking barefoot. He was doing all of these penances. Why? Because he said, offer, I offer myself to you, Virgin Mary. I offer myself to you, Jesus. I want to save souls. I need to save these Albigensians. They're destroying the church. And Mary never, never, never rejects the plea of her children. And so Mary appeared to St. Dominic and said, Dominic, if you want to win, the battering ram is the angelic psalter. What is the angelic psalter? The angelic salutation is the Hail Mary. The psalter, it's like the Psalms, there's 150. So you pray the angelic psalter. And she gave him the mysteries. Preach my psalter and you will be victorious against everything. Wow. And so St. Dominic was preaching, and sure enough, he was converting everybody. Everybody, he, even little kids were doing extraordinary penances. It's miraculous. Everything about the rosary is perfect. Everything about it is perfect. Even the things that you hate about it is perfect. It's exactly what you need. You need a little bitter medicine every once in a while. Straighten you up. Why do I say this? Remember, the Virgin Mary is the perfect spouse of the Holy Spirit. She is Our Lady Seat of Wisdom. Everything that she does has several ends. Why is the rosary powerful? It's got the Our Father. Does anybody know any more powerful prayer than the Our Father? Because Jesus said that that's the prayer to pray. It's got the Our Father. It's got the Hail Mary, the words that help to crush the head of the serpent, the beginning of our salvation. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Not only that, but it's sacred scripture. So just repeating it like a mantra, even when you're not even able to focus, the Holy Spirit's going to be stirring in you. I had the longest day today. I was falling asleep in the Adoration Chapel, and I was just like whispering the words, Hail Mary, full of grace. And now I'm so awake. I just immediately got like a shot. I, I sent Keenan a text, Keenan, pray, I'm so sleepy. And then I said, Hail Mary, full of grace. It was like electricity went through me. Why else is it powerful? It's powerful because it's meditation on the life of Jesus Christ. This is very important. Have you ever read the Bible and then you're like, wow, I feel so close to Jesus. That's because there's a spiritual principle involved. A grace remembered 
is a grace received. When you meditate upon Pentecost, especially you hear those readings at Pentecost, you start thinking more about the Holy Spirit. You meditate upon the scriptures of the wedding feast at Cana, you start thinking more about marriage. You hear about Jesus' work in miracles, you start thinking about that miracle power. You start reading those verses that are like, I have a plan to prosper you and not to harm you. You're like, heck yeah! God has a plan for me! Because you've been reading it. A grace remembered is a grace received. This is the life of Jesus Christ. Every time you say the Hail Mary, you're saying hope, 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 hope. God hears his people's cry. Mary's on my side. I know, Gabriel, but it's boring. I know, that's why it's so good. That's why it's so good. Because what is one of the problems that most people suffer from today? A feminacy, an unwillingness, that's not like a feminacy, a feminacy, an unwillingness to engage the arduous, an unwillingness to do what is difficult for the sake of the good. So many people are addicted to pornography. So many people are addicted to self-solitary sin. So many people are addicted to their phones. They can't even break away. I'm just looking. I'm, I, me too, bro. Me too. Guilty. I know better. And guilty. We're addicted to, I need fast food. I don't have time. This makes you stop. This purifies the mind. This puts Jesus Christ in here. I have seen, no, no lie, I have seen more miracles from this than anything else. This is the miracle maker. I have seen men who are addicted to pornography, who have been on looking at pornography for nine, ten years. They take every self-help, they can't stop. They try this, somehow they have the strength. It reforms the mind, it purifies the mind, it purifies the will, it strengthens the will. It kills you at every moment. But don't you know that's what it means to be a disciple of Jesus Christ? Deny yourself. Take up your cross. Follow me. Self-denial. Sacrifice for the sake of others. What does it mean to be a man? To sacrifice for the sake of the beloved. How can you, not make, a, how can you make a big sacrifice for the sake of the beloved if you're not willing to make a little sacrifice? This is the little sacrifice day in and day out. It never gets easy. It, for me, it's ne it never gets easy. Why? Because I'm a sinner and I need constant purification. It's hard. I had a conversation with my daughter about marriage. My daughter's only eight. <laughs> I told her, because we prayed a rosary for her vocation. And I said, whatever your vocation is, do God's will. And you know what God's will for you is? What, Dad? Holiness. Get to heaven. Be a saint. It's easier if you become a religious if that's God's will for you. There's, more, there's no offense, but there's more canonized saints that are religious. There's fewer married. But it's very easy to do if you have your mind right and if you have the right help, spiritual help. And I said, don't marry a non-Catholic. Why? Because they're not in the state of grace. They're in mortal sin. They don't have the help of God. They don't have the help of the Blessed Mother. If they are not in the state of grace... How are they going to have the supernatural assistance to keep you in the state of grace? Your vocation is to get them to heaven. How are they going to get you to heaven? Good point, Dad. What you believe in your deepest core, that's how you make your choices. If you don't have the most deep, profound thing in common, no matter how much you like each other and how much emotions you have for each other, it's a heck of hard. And not only that, but your vocation as a mother... I know you're like, why are we talking about this? It's important, trust me, I'm getting to a point. Your, <laughs> your vocation as a mother is to get your children to heaven. It's st scientific, statistically proven that if the father doesn't practice the faith, no matter how holy the mother is, the children don't practice the faith. If they do, it's a miracle. It's like 5% or 3%, something extraordinarily low. Probably because they had a good young adult group like KYA. <laughs> well then how do I find a good husband dad if a man prays this I will approve of him why because I don't know a man alive who prays this who lives in mortal sin I don't I know many men who live in mortal sin none who do this some might be in mortal sin constantly and then they start this and then it gets them out of it and it's a struggle and they're holy but they're not living in it. They either give up the rosary or they give up the sin. So, pro tip ladies, get your man to pray the rosary. You'll make him a better husband because he'll have more grace because he'll have the assistance of the Virgin Mary. 
Men, pray the rosary so you can be the man that God created you to be. Women need to pray the rosary because women need to know what it means to be a woman. Our culture has said that women are objects to be used. And so, sometimes women buy the lie and allow themselves to be objects simply so that they can get love. And men don't do the right thing and say, no, that's what Adam's sin was. Even though Eve fell first, Eve was not even out of the sight of Adam when God gave the commandment to Eve that you shouldn't eat of the tree of the knowledge. She didn't hear that. He had to tell her about it. And then when the serpent came, he didn't stop her. He's got to tell her no. And you need grace to be able to tell other people no because you need grace to be able to tell yourself no. Now, why else do we pray the rosary? I kind of alluded to this, but Mary crushes the head of the serpent. That's her vocation. That's, that's her charism in the Holy Spirit. Charism. Special gift of the Holy Spirit to crush the head of the serpent. Everybody in here is under the attack of the serpent. So, and I'm just going to talk about this briefly. We have videos and podcasts and things that we talk, talk about it in depth. But everybody experiences ordinary temptation. These are little thoughts you get that tell you you're ugly, you're fat, you're useless, you're stupid, you have to worry about money, nobody loves you, nobody cares about you, you're all alone, you have no future. You hear these voices in your head and you know they're not from you. You know they're not from you because they're hurting you. You're not telling them to yourself. Something in here is telling you. Then you say, you got a point, and then you start going down a spiral. That's not from you. That's the devil. The devil isn't a monster that rages. He's a whisperer. He's a seducer. Praying the rosary on a regular basis. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. When you don't want to. Nobody wants to. Let me make that clear. You're never going to want to. I've tried. This hasn't happened yet. <laughs> Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. She's reorienting who you are. She's reminding you of what your purpose is, what your mission in life is. What's most important is who you really are. A child of God. A child of Mary. A child of St. Joseph. There's also something called extraordinary activity of the devil. There's local infestations and there's personal infestations. There's, ob there's obsessions and there's oppressions. Oppressions when you're literally getting like, you know, hit or, you know, illnesses and things. Local infestation is when there's something wrong with your house. Of course, you can do house blessings. Consecration is the answer to every diabolical issue. What is consecration? Giving your life over to God. Because if you are the property of God, you cannot be the property of Satan. The Virgin Mary crushes the head of the serpent. So what is a diabolical obsession? Is when you have a temptation so strong that your mind feels like you have no free will. Has anybody ever had that before? I've had that before. It's horrible. You're like, oh, I, this is wrong. I can't. And this is like, yes, you must. And you're like, oh, man. Crushes the head of the serpent. There's also 15 promises. On the back of the picture of the Virgin Mary I gave you, there's 15 promises to those who pray the rosary that Our Lady gave to St. Dominic, Blessed Allen. In the reality, there's more. I'm going to go through a couple of them briefly for you. Those who pray the rosary every day shall receive signal graces, little signs, little coincidences. Anytime Mary does something, she's always, always working it to many ends. Let me tell you a quick miracle story. Daniela had put in the... Uh, live chat thing that disappears after a little while. She said, he's going to tell us so many miracle stories. And I was like, okay, Lord, <laughs> tell me one. <laughs> and then instantaneously, boom. But I, it was because I said, what do you want? So I was hired to make videos. I make video productions on the side to help pay the bills. So I was hired to make a video. And part of that video necessitated me filming the head of a religious order that I did not agree with that I don't like. And so I agreed with the video that they were making. I just didn't like this particular person. And I said, Blessed Mother, I don't want to use my talents to glorify this person. I don't want to be in the same room as this person. I don't want to have to film them and nod and say, Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Get me out of this, Blessed Mother. So I'm on the way to the filming. And this person was only going to be in town this one day. And so I was at the university, a local university here, a Catholic university, not going to name any names. And I was praying the Holy Rosary the whole time. Blessed Mother. And I don't know why, because normally I'm like, Mary, normally I have the confidence, like, if it's happening, Mary's going to get me through it. Bad things, I prayed the rosary, Mary's going to bring something good out of this. But this time I was like, I don't want to do this, please. Don't make me go in there. I don't know what was wrong with me. 
but it was a part of her plan too. So I was parallel parking, and I'm praying to Hail Mary, full of grace, please get me ass. Parallel parking, all of a sudden, ah! a giant truck just barreled me straight through. And I was like, oh, this is not what I had in mind. I don't want to die, because it was so quick. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, I see my bumper of the car going with the truck. <laughs> that was my bumper. I was like, oh, this is going to be expensive. <laughs> and the wheels of the truck got blown out. And a man got out of the truck and he started running. And I was like, this is the worst hit and run ever. Even the man is running. <laughs> and his truck is still there. And then a couple of seconds later, I hear another man coming. Uh, has anybody seen my truck? Oh, my truck was stolen. All of my livelihood is in the truck. Because it was from a construction worker who had all of his tools. I don't know what kind of worker he was, but he had all of his tools in the back. And they were stolen off of a job. He was just parking the truck. Like saying, God answered my prayer. My truck is here. Oh, thank God. He didn't care that his wheels were blown out. His tools were there. He has insurance on his truck. And I was like, okay, well, two prayers were answered. Not, not exactly what I had in mind. <laughs> insurance paid for it because it was not like an accident. It was a stolen vehicle that hit it and the guy ran off. And so it was like the weirdest circumstance and my insurance like took care of it. But the miracle didn't finish there. They take my car to Great Wood. It's near Sugar Land. They're taking it to an auto shop in Greatwood. My mom is with me because mama's boy, like I said. And we're following the big truck with my car all demolished behind it. And he pulls into a neighborhood and he's just driving through a neighborhood, just going back and forth, up and down the streets. And I'm like, what is this dude doing? And it's like five, 10 minutes just going all the... I'm like, this is the weirdest day of my life. There is not an auto body shop in this neighborhood. Why are we going back and back and back and back? Five, ten minutes of doing this, he stops the truck, and then my mind's really blown. Because he stops the truck in front of a house, and I'm like, that house looks familiar. I've been to this house before. This is the house of one of my students who I taught in seventh and sixth, seventh and eighth grade. So strange. I've been to the house at a party that he had eighth grade graduation. I took a picture of my car in front of the house. I'll, I'll, show, I'll post it later one day. Picture of my car in front of the house. I sent it to this person. Let's call him JP. It's not him, but it's somebody close to him. And I said, hey, bro. I sent him a messenger. Hey, is this your house? That's my house. Why is your car in front of my house? I don't know. <laughs> God put me here to tell you to pray the rosary every single day. And he's like, amen. Our lady is a good, powerful intercessor. Next day comes, Gabe. Thank you so much for telling me to pray the rosary. I knew when you stopped in front of my house and told me to pray the rosary that God put you there because something was about to happen to me. And immediately I prayed the rosary and sure enough, something bad happened. But in my heart, I knew everything was going to be okay because God put you there and had me pray the rosary. And I was like, nobody's going to believe this story. <laughs> but this, it, they happen to me all the time. When you're praying the rosary regularly, Weird things, coincidences, little nudges, little I love yous, signal graces, little signs. Other graces that Mary promises. Whoever shall faithfully serve me by the recitation of the rosary, they'll have special protection and the greatest graces. Special protection. Doesn't mean your life is going to be perfect, but you can tell that if something, if you've prayed your rosary and something bad does happen, you can be assured that something good's going to come out of it. JP2, we all know and love JP2. He was shot almost like a very close distance by Mehmet Ali Akga, whatever his name was. And the bullets went in and somehow they were all in this area, but they missed all of his vital organs. And he said, I knew I was going to live because although one finger pulled the trigger, I knew another finger, the hand of Mary, was guiding the bullets. So something bad might happen, but let me tell you what, if you weren't praying the rosary, something way worse might have happened. The rosary shall be a powerful armor against hell. It will destroy vice. It will decrease sin. It will defeat heresies. Heresies are errors in teaching. Why will it defeat heresies? Because it's the gospel. Because it's the Virgin Mary. Because it's the words of Jesus Christ. That is the source of orthodoxy. That gets us back to our roots, what our faith is really about. No, nobody can continue praying the rosary and remain in mortal sin. Nobody will be damned. St. Louis de Montfort in his book, The Secret of the Rosary, which I have copies for you thanks to a wonderful patron, he said, you could have one foot in hell. You could have sold your soul to the devil. 
And if you've prayed the rosary every day, I am confident you will not be damned. It's impossible. Why? Think about what you're doing when you're praying the Hail Mary. Pray for me now and at the hour of my death. Pray for me now and at the hour of my death, 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 at the hour of my death. Think of how many thousands of times that those prayers are happening for you now and at the hour of your death. They say that the demons, they try to tempt you one last time. They, they stand back right to the point where you're about to die, and then they're just like whoosh, trying to get you to doubt, trying to get you to question, because it's over. You're like, oh, I, I, it's going to be tough. I pray for myself every day when I say pray for me now and at the hour of my death. You will get the grace of the Virgin Mary assisting you at the hour of your death. Some people, they say their faces light up. St. Bernadette had a terrible, painful death. And at the hour of her death, her face lit up. And, we, and I can only imagine it's because of all those Hail Marys, all those rosaries she's prayed. And I could go through every single one of these. Essentially, Mary's going to help you. She's not going to make your life perfect. Every child of Mary is going to become like Jesus Christ. What does that mean to become like Jesus Christ? That means everybody's going to suffer. But your suffering will bring souls to God. She will use those graces to save the souls of your family and your friends. But you have to understand when you give your life over to the Virgin Mary, you give her everything and she receives everything. Your worries, your cares, your family, your problems, they're now her problems. And she takes them very seriously. She loves your family and your friends more than you love your family and your friends. She wants you to be pure more than you want to be pure. She wants you to know your vocation more than you want to know your vocation. And you can say, Gabriel, I pray the rosary and nothing happens. Feels dry. I hate it. Nothing happens. I prayed the rosary every day. I'm not changed. I'm still uh, addicted to all my vices. Did you pray the rosary? is the question. What do you mean? What is this? Trick question? Yeah, trick question. I said that this was called the angelic psalter. It was meant to be 150 to represent the 150 psalms. It was meant to be all of the mysteries. When Mary came and gave all of these beautiful and amazing promises, she meant it to be all of the mysteries, broken up throughout the day, just like the liturgy of the hours, in the morning, in the daytime, in the evening, this is where you'll get liberation from demons if you have them. Why? Because the demons are hitting you in the morning, in the day, and at night. So you pray your rosary in the morning and you don't pray the rest of the day, guess what? They're going to be back on your shoulder before you go to bed. But if you hit them in the morning, you hit them at the day, you hit them at the night, the next time, the morning, day, and the night, it stinks, but you're going to start to realize after a week, after two weeks, I'm a much better person. Amazing things are happening in my life. I'm not the same person I was before. Not only that, but other people in my life are starting to change because of the way God is working in my life. It'll make you a saint. It's a saint maker. There's countless saints that have prayed all the mysteries of the rosary every day. It's difficult, but it becomes so easy after you make it a habit. It's a constant death to self, but it will change your life. I'm telling you, if, I, I, if, if you know people who pray all of the mysteries every day, those are people who have lived lives that they regret, and now they're free people. They're free. Freedom. In, it's, it's the same paradox of the gospel. If you wish to save your life, you must lose it. Those who lose their lives for my sake will find it. This is not more true than the life of the Virgin Mary. Let thy will be done. Let it be done to me according to thy word. You become another Mary. Mary helps you to become another Christ. S surrender your will for her will, and Jesus will reign in your heart and in the hearts of all of your families and your friends. There is something that's often forgotten in Catholic spirituality, and that is reparation, suffering, sacrifice. At every Marian apparition, Mary tells, not she says to pray the rosary, but she also says, offer sacrifices for sinners. Offer penance for the conversion of sinners. So many sinners go to hell because there's nobody to pray and to do penance for them. Many times, what gets us to do things that are difficult is if we have a convincing why. Why am I going to do this? For whom am I going to do this for? Most of us don't love ourselves enough to do it for ourselves, but there's somebody in our lives who we do love enough that we don't want to see go to hell. There's a kid in your class who you know is on the highway to hell. 
There's a family member in your family who you know is on the highway to hell. We didn't do this, but I often do with younger teenagers. I'll have them meditate on hell just for like a minute. Imagine the torments. Imagine the flesh being pulled off of the body. Imagine spears being put in the eyes. Imagine hair being pulled off. Imagine being set on fire. Even for one second, that'd be horrible. But to be on fire completely, to be so thirsty, to have things poking at you, to be shrunk in a little box, in a little oven, to be freezing, and it never, 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 never stops. What wouldn't you do to save the souls of your family and your friends? Even just pick one person. Is that going to be the only reason you pray? No. But when you don't want to, you'll think of that person and say, here we go. Let's do this. And you'll get on your knees instead of laying in the bed because you know every time you get in the bed to pray the rosary, you go to sleep. We're living in difficult times. So I've been talking to you about three rosaries. And if you do one, that's great. Let me be very clear. You do not commit any sin whatsoever by, by failing to pray the rosary. You don't even commit a venial sin for not praying it. It's not a sin not to do these devotions. Now, I don't know what kind of sins you're going to get into if you don't do them, but it's not a sin not to. So if you're praying one rosary a day and you're like, that's all I'm going to do, okay, that's a good thing. I'm not trying to like bash that. I'm just saying that if you're not seeing the kind of results that the Virgin Mary promised, it's because we're not actually doing what the Virgin Mary promised. And the devil hates the rosary. So he's going to use every lie and every tactic to get you not to use it. This is spiritual theology. Everything about it is perfect. It works in every circumstance. Because she's the mother. Because she's the spouse of the Holy Spirit. Because she's the perfect intercessor. Because she crushes the head of the serpent. Because she's the most wise. Because she's the most beautiful. Because she's the most pure. Because she's everything. She's perfect, or else Jesus wouldn't have had her as his mother. So how do I do this practically? Because if you try to do this, you're going to fail, if you don't have proper tips, if you're, if you're going to try this. You're going to do this practically by carrying a rosary with you at all times. First step. Can't, you're, people, I use my fingers. You're not going to pray on your fingers for more than like a day, because your fingers are first and foremost fingers. No offense. This is first and foremost a rosary. So step number one to praying the rosary at all is keep a rosary with you at all times. Very simple. Find one you like. Find one that's beautiful. Be willing to spend $50. You pay $1,000 for a phone that you carry with you everywhere, spend a little bit of money on a rosary that you carry with you everywhere. Because at the very least, you're going to be like, where's my rosary? I didn't spend $100 on that rosary just to leave it in the drawer. Get that bad boy out and show everybody. Look at my rosary, look at my rosary, look at my rosary. Spent like $60 on this thing, and I paid $4 per medal on this thing. That's a good business to be in. Step number two, think about the picture in your mind first before you say the prayers. A lot of times people think, I have to be thinking at the picture and saying the prayers, and I'm not good at it, and I get distracted, and I can't think of the image and say the words. Are you human? Yeah. Okay, just making sure, because humans don't think about more than one thing at a time. So you pick one and you go with it. If you're very good at visualization, visualize and just get the words out. If you're not good at visual visualization, think of a picture and then say the words. What matters at the end of the day is, did this count as a rosary? Yes, it did. Moving on. St. Louis de Montfort, as an aside, said, you do more good about talking about the rosary or it pr promoting the rosary, and you could do a very bad job of it as long as you're saying pray the rosary somehow in there, than if you were to give the most eloquent talks every week. You do more good with one talk on the rosary. Why? Because it changes your habits. You're going to forget all that stuff I said in the beginning. You've already forgotten it. You're, sometimes you're like, dang, that was some cool stuff, and then it's gone. <laughs> Wasted. Wasted my breath. That's why I said I want to talk about this because this part, like it actually is going to do something. The other stuff was nice, but it was like, I could barely remember it. <laughs> so you'll do more good by promoting this. Pick a picture in your head. Okay, I got the mental picture. Do the best you can and just keep going forward because you got another one coming up at noon. Tip number three, presence, 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 presence 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 the first step to prayer 
any prayer, the first step to receiving Holy Communion, the first step to going to Mass, the first step to reading the Bible, the first step to looking at a holy picture, the first step to praying anything, God is present. Mary is present. Call to mind the presence of Mary. Call to mind the presence of God. And the beautiful thing, this is why this is so powerful. Because it is sacred scripture, because it is invoking the name of Mary, because it is the life of Jesus Christ that you're meditating upon, that is Holy Spirit power. Even though you're dry as a bone, eventually repeating these sacred scriptures over and over and over again, that presence comes. So I really don't even need to mention number three because the presence is going to come anyways, but it's just an important thing to remember. Number four, you need a plan. You need a plan. Say, I'm going to pray my first rosary right when I wake up. I'm going to have two done by noon. I'm going to pray before bed with my family or my friends. Have a plan, regardless of how many you're going to do. If you don't make it a priority, you're not going to do it. And most importantly, if you're going to try and do more than one mystery, the rosary was originally intended, remember the angelic psalter, was originally intended to be a long prayer, long one. That means you do not do, or you can if you want, but I don't, do the Apostles' Creed, the Our Father, the three Hail Marys that go before. You only do those one time because that's the beginning of the prayer. So you don't start the prayer all over again, right? Also, you can do the same mysteries over and over again. You can do the sorrowful over and over. There's no hard and fast rules. And finally, I'll talk about the luminous mysteries briefly, because I did mention that there was three uh, before, and now that there's a fourth. We're living in a time where we need more prayer and we need more penance, because we're losing the battle badly. And the only way to win a battle is if you start fighting for other people. What, what are we losing right now? We're losing the war on family. We're losing the war on marriage. We're losing the war on baptized. People get baptized and they don't ever come back to church. We call them baptized unbelievers. We're losing the war on the priesthood. We're losing the war on the real presence. People say that Jesus is just a guru or a hippie. All of these problems that we are suffering with today are answered in the mysteries of the luminous. They're made for today. Remember, a grace remembered is a grace renewed is a grace received. Objectively speaking, if you have two people and one prays three and one prays four, he who prays more gets more. So objectively speaking, if you have somebody who's doing three, somebody who's doing four, you get more. So I encourage you to try and do all. I've noticed a special grace in myself and in the lives of my family and friends who do more. But don't do too much that you can't handle. If you're like, I'm only going to do three, fine, do three, that's good. And I'll conclude with this. At the hour of your death, you won't regret the time and the ways that you've given your life to the Virgin Mary. The Virgin Mary wants nothing more than to have a relationship with you. The first thing you do in the morning should say, Mary, be with me. Because some of you are praying many rosaries a day. Because I see a lot of heads going like this when it's like testimony time. And I'm like, you'll notice a difference. You're like, yeah, you sure heck will. Even just praying the rosary is not enough. We need to completely surrender our lives over to Jesus Christ through Mary. Really, 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 every day, the first thing, just because you're a creature of habit, first thing, Mary, what do you want of me? What do you want of me? Mary, be with me. When she is with you, you will sin less and you'll be more virtuous. And the best way to give your life totally over to Mary is to kill yourself every day with this thing. You have the power to change the world. You do have the power to change the world. Thank you so much for watching this video. Before we conclude, three things. Number one, if you enjoyed this, please consider sharing it. Number two, you know, subscribe, hit that notification bell. And number three, it's very important that you wear the brown scapular. If you do not own a brown scapular or a miraculous medal, you can get one on the internet. If you would like one of these miraculous medals and one of these brown scapulars, I will send you one, but you have to support me on Patreon. Patreon.com slash Gabi After Hours. God bless you, God love you, and we will see you very soon.